Windyville is an unincorporated community with 51 residents in Dallas County. You can find Windyville about an hour northeast of Missouri Springfield. Windyville conditions led to the community's name, but in Missouri, people call this town Spookyville because Windyville is believed to be haunted. In the cemetery, children can be heard laughing. As you drive down the M. M Highway, you'll come across an old bridge that crosses a creek. If you stop on the bridge at night, you might see a woman walking the bridge, probably looking for her child. It is said that Windyville misery is an eerie place that seems to be lost in time. It's also said Windyville is home to a woman with the head of a goat, a kind of spectral hitchhiker. Please keep a lookout for red eyes that stare into empty streets from the abandoned buildings. It seems a lot is transpiring in Windyville, and you might want to think twice before visiting. It has also been noted. Things have been a little safer, more so after two men were arrested, James Phelps, 58, a longtime resident of Southwest Missouri, and Timothy Norton, 56, a truck driver who does not hold a permanent address. It turned out recent stories seem scarier than what you tell around a campfire. And in fact, we've got some new ghost legends from this small town. And I tell you, it's scarier than the campfire stories you've heard. <laughs> Across the nation is a story about a missing 33-year-old woman named Cassidy Rainwater. Cassidy hails from three counties in Missouri, but this story is originating from Lebanon, Missouri. In the last few weeks, multiple arrests, court proceedings, and new developments have occurred in the case. Investigators have arrested both suspects in Cassidy's kidnapping, as part of their investigation. And while investigators were looking for clues and forensic evidence, one of the suspect's homes was burned to the ground due to an arson fire. Definitely hindered, but hopefully didn't destroy their investigation and any evidence they hoped to gather. Cassidy was last seen on July 25th, and after a month authorities learned of her disappearance. So here's how it all unfolded. James told police. He last saw Cassidy on July 25th, 2021. He claims Cassidy walked to the end of his driveway during the night, where she met a vehicle on the street. Cassidy hasn't been seen since. Briefly, Cassidy stayed with James while she got back on her feet. Besides that, he added just one day before Cassidy was last seen, Timothy Norton was called to help him with some stuff. So one month later, we're on Wednesday, August 25, 2021. On this day, a family member of Cassidy's reported her missing to the Dallas County Sheriff's Office. Cassidy hasn't been heard from or seen for a while. And that's when the Cassidy rainwater search officially started. An unexpected turn of events occurred on September 16, 2021. Someone from the FBI contacted the Dallas Sheriff's Department, saying they had received a tip photo of Cassidy rainwater being caged up on James Phillips' property. This picture shows Cassie partially naked inside of a cage as if she's in trouble. I wonder how the FBI got this to the Dallas County Sheriff's Department so quickly. FBI is a federal organization that works all over the country. Anyhow, thankfully, though, the FBI got the photo and contacted them, then investigators arrested both men and seized James' phone. There were, in fact, seven more photos on James' phone. He was taken to the Dallas County Jail after his arrest, where he's still there to this day. To put this woman in a cage and take pictures of her is cruel so animalistic. Just a few days later, we'll be on the 19th of September, 2021. Timothy told police that he had lived in his truck since he was an over-the-road trucker. Even so, the address listed for him in online court systems and court documents is the same as for James. But by now, we know from Timothy Norton's statements and what the sheriff's department thinks, it was a call for him to help restrain a woman on the 20th of July. I guess that he was sleeping in his truck. Something happens in James Phelps' cabin, and he calls him on his cell phone. Hey, I want you to restrain this woman, and put her back in the cage. So, on the 20th of September, police brought Timothy back for another interview. 
and that's when he confessed to restraining Cassie, back in July. That's what it says. Norton tells authorities he knows Cassidy is being held at Phelps' property. This makes me think, if he is also aware she's being held in a cage. So the next day, Timothy Norton was arrested, and he's in Dallas County Jail without bond. Police head to Moon Valley Drives to investigate, on the 23rd of September. And she's been missing since July. We need answers. I can't imagine what her family is suffering through, and I'm sincerely sorry. People in the community said Cassidy wouldn't have run away without keeping in touch. But people think with the photos, and the arrests that followed, authorities are likely looking for remains and there is no hope of getting Cassie back alive. As of Friday, October 1, 2021, investigators are still waiting for DNA evidence in Cassie's disappearance. So it could take at least 30 days for any results to pop up. At the same time, we hear many rumors about them leaving this rural part of Missouri. We're guessing they're looking for her. Currently, we are waiting on some DNA evidence. At least for now, they know she was held against her will. And these two, the first one says she was staying with him. Then we have his friend who says, yeah, I was aware she was being held on the property. I restrained her once. Now you're saying that's almost an admission of guilt when it comes to kidnapping. But before you go to court, you've got to prove that this man or these two kidnapped this girl. Still, you think about it. If kidnapping somebody and putting a 33 nude woman in a cage. Sorry, but no. This is not the first time. Phelps, 58, Norton, 56, may have done even worse. However, what I found interesting was. There wasn't much major about their backgrounds, so what information I could find out about each of them. Clearly, little to worry about. As for James' property, he's actually renting this place, the place where the cabin burned down, and where they think Cassie was kept. Not sure how long he's occupied this space, but it sounds like it's been a while. Apparently, some reporters could dig up some information about two convicted sexual offenders associated with that address. But, from what we can tell, Phelps and Norton both seem to be pretty clean. Neither of them is registered in Missouri, except that there's something called human trafficking. Cassidy Rainwater is still missing, and her case is a hot topic on social media. There's a lot of mystery surrounding this case, which fuels speculation on social media. Both men have been charged with kidnapping, inflicting injuries, and terrorizing. In light of the crime's extreme nature, investigators didn't give many details. We'll also watch for more charges in the coming days. While the guys are in jail, investigators search the grounds. But this disappearance scared the crap out of everyone in town. And one rumor says they might be or may have been involved in the Springfield 3 cases. I know it sounds like a stretch, but keep in mind the proximity. Locals in this area don't want to forget about three missing women, no matter how old the case is. It's one of the most famous actual crime cases of all time, so you can't just forget about it. Stacy McCall, Cheryl Levitt, and Susie Streeter. The Springfield 3. The women went missing from a home on East Delmer Street in Springfield, Missouri, on the 7th of June, 1992, and I don't think it's just the proximity that some think is connected. It's the van. They found a van at James' place. Some photos were taken from the air of the property that was burned down. And people are saying this looks like the van police were looking for in 1992. I think that's the missing link. Apparently, that's how the Springfield 3 were kidnapped. Police also found meat hooks on the property during his house search. By now, they're looking for remains, and cadaver dogs can hit different parts of the property, and that will lead them to her. I haven't heard anything from law enforcement, they haven't found her body or anyone else's, which makes me wonder again where Cassidy Rainwater is. Regarding cannibalism, could there have been a situation where they were selling human meat? Who are their connections? At this point, there is some speculation regarding the caged victims during the transport of kidnapped victims across state lines. Phelps rents this property and kidnaps a person, and they cage the person, and we have Timothy Norton. He drives a truck and crosses state lines constantly, finding victims. Transporting them back to the secluded cabin with a creepy look in the middle of nowhere? Do you think so?
it sounds plausible. Our suspect in Cassidy's disappearance is currently in jail without even trying to piece together what he is saying. We believe these two people are responsible. Our evidence shows that, and we have them in custody right now. Basically, it's a mystery, we're concerned, and we're trying to figure out what happened. After all, we're humans, and there was a human inside that cage. We want to know what happened to Cassidy, but we don't have any answers. So we will have to speculate. This is probably the creepiest thing about it. Cassie isn't the only one who's allegedly missing. Her mom had been missing too. So Cassidy's mom, Tracy, was reported missing in 2007. A year later, her mother's remains were found in a field near Lebanon. Windyville isn't that far away from this field. Although not very close, it is in the same part of the state as where these two people live. Tracy's disappearance was reported as suspicious, but no cause of death has ever been given. No one has ever been arrested. I have no idea, but let's say Cassidy's disappearance has something to do with her mother's death. While I doubt it, I hope Cassie Rainwater's trial will bring us more answers. The new hearing is on the 23rd of November. I am glad you're here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being our best friend. We'd love to hear your thoughts about this case.